Hey, que pasa, my trading amigos? I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, March 6th. Now, if this is the first time you've been here and you wonder what the heck do we do, we look at OTC and penny stocks. Not just any old penny stock. We're not just here generally talking about them like a hen house. No, we are looking for stocks that have potential which infers we're not going to be looking at rocket stocks, stocks that were ripping it across the screens all day today, making big gains. No, we're looking for stocks more or less under the radar. I'm primarily looking for stocks that have warm charts. They got setups for a breakout. And then I'm looking for news to back it up, that match to set that chart on fire so we can get those gains running. Every now and then though, big piece of news comes out. That is the catalyst. That's what I'm headlining, not the charts. It will rip that chart apart if you get a big enough catalyst, won't it? Now the stocks we're looking at, they're all penny stocks. Every single stock is under five bucks. But since they're on every single market, we could be looking at stocks anywhere. Now all the stocks I do look at, I start right here with my research. It doesn't matter if they're on the OTC, the New York Stock Exchange, or the NASDAQ. It doesn't. I start here at the otcmarkets.com website because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. That in itself is worth a ton. Google is a storehouse for old, outdated information and they constantly keep throwing new veggies in an old batch. I don't like running around looking for what I want. I come here, if they don't have it, then I'm forced to go searching. But you might as well go to where you know the information is at and current. They've got lots of information here, folks. They've got the news, all that news right there. That comes from the OTC market. There's about mm, maybe 10 days worth in there. That's good news too. Oldest is up at the top, newest is down at the bottom. These are new technologies, mergers, acquisitions. It's the juicy news. So if you haven't had time to really comb through the news over the last 10 days, there's a nice, huge, juicy slice of it right there. Also, you're going to get all of your financials here, all of your filings. These are real important, folks. You need to learn to just jump into filings and check out the top headlines, see if it's what you want and get out of it. This is where I find a lot of our hot deals. All right, let's take a look at our OTC market. I think I bought us enough time to let that scroll by. All right. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Look here, we're under a billion. I haven't refreshed this. We're under 200,000, under four. We're gonna refresh this and really hope for something. Oh, okay. Woo. We were gonna be at new lows there, folks. That was scary. We're just in average territory right now. It's low average territory, $1.2 billion in volume. We'd like to see that up at 2 billion. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to have seen it like six months ago. Share volume, we'd like to see that at 10 billion. We're at 4.4. Again, six months ago, it's been a long time. And our trades, we were hovering around 250 to 300,000, then started hovering closer to 250, and now we're starting to hover over 200,000 trades. So things are getting slower and slower. I wish I could bring you hope, but this is the truth. All right, I've got some interesting stocks I found today. Uh, two of them are chart-based and one is based on uh, curiosity. <laughs> Let me show you what I got. Got a real interesting stock here. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. It is also a warrant. Now, a warrant is just a different type of stock. You can trade it like any stock, so don't worry about it being a warrant. But the warrant is in play right now. It has got a hot chart and the company's got hot news. So we are taking a look at ticker PRSTW, Presto Automation. Now this company just came on the market September of last year. Now we talk a lot about companies that are doing big things, creating these devices and services that are changing the world, saving lives. Well, this company hasn't got any of that pressure. <laughs> Honestly, what they've created here is helping companies make money, but I'm not being cruel, but it's a worthless item. But in saying that, it helps me and you to laugh and smile. And if businesses are making money and we're happy about it, there's nothing wrong with that. So this company has got a lot of filings that came out. None of them really are what I would call catalytic. 
but they've got great news and the revenues are exploding. So we've got all kinds of reasons to be looking at this. PRSTW, she finished the day at just about eight and a half cents with almost 12% gains. Now they don't give us any description here, but I've got a great description. Matter of fact, I found a news press. You might as well call this an introductory letter. They came on the market in September. This came out in December and it basically tells us what they do. And it is a very interesting service. It is going to change our lives, not in a big way, but it is going to change our lives. They tell us here that Presto Automation is a leader in restaurant technology and they announced the introduction of their custom voice feature in Presto Voice TM drive through automation solution. This highly innovative feature, an industry first, takes the drive through experience to a whole new level, allowing guests to converse with celebrities, mascots, characters, and other custom voices while placing an order at the drive through So now when you come up, there's no person at the window taking your order. It is an AI service agent. And it could be, uh, I don't know, Eddie Murphy, Scooby-Doo, Mickey Mouse. It could be anybody taking your order. And this is entertaining. People actually come back for this. With custom voices, drive-through ordering is transformed from a purely transactional experience that we just completely forget about to an exciting interaction that guests look forward to and want to experience more frequently. People are actually coming back to this restaurant, going through drive through again, just to hear Scooby-Doo take their order. They even bring their friends who also spend money while they're there. Presto Voice is currently the industry's most widely adopted AI powered, of course it is, drive through voice assistant and catch this, with over 75% of the market share. Of all the business available, they got 75% of it. Now, I think first off, there's not a lot of competition, right? I haven't heard of a lot of people doing this. And if there is, well, they're a front runner. They're obviously grabbing the biggest part of this market. And why not? They are getting contracts with people like Checkers and Rally, uh, Del Taco. These are two of their largest contracts that they've got already, and they are gigantic. But they've got a lot of contracts. They have got over uh, 3,000 establishments using this service right now. And why wouldn't they? They tell us right here that by using the service, companies are boosting their sales by an average of $330,000 a year. By just using this service, that's how much extra money they're making. Plus, they're saving an additional $35,000 because they got rid of one of their employees that was at that window all that time. That's the annual salary, don't you think? So they're getting $365,000 a year by using AI servers through their drive through They go on to tell us here that Presto Voice offers a significant advantage to restaurants by minimizing the human error, reducing wait times, and freeing up that staff. Now they tell us a little bit about the features of this voice. They say they've got celebrity voices. Now how many that is, I don't know. Is it unlimited? I mean, do they have to have permission of the voices they use? Are they trademarked? Are they protected? Do they have to pay royalties? Maybe that will be a market now. I don't know. Uh, the other thing they say they can do is seasonal experiences. Well, of course, you can do Santa Claus and a Wicked Witch and probably the Easter Bunny and the Great Pumpkin. <laughs> They also do brand mascots, you know, like Ronald McDonald, Jack in the Box, Colonel Sanders, Burger King, although I have no idea what sort of voice the Jack in the Box would have. They also do something unique here. They can use voices for local people from local events, local heroes, local sports. So if you had a hero in your county, he could be taking your order at Burger King and you could feel kind of special talking to the hero. And they tell us that the flexibility here is just limitless. The customization can be done practically in any way on any voice. So it's unparalleled what they're doing. They finally tell us here that Presto Voice is specifically designed to help quick service restaurants fully reopen and scale even with limited staff. With Presto Voice, guests can place orders in a natural conversational style via highly accurate 
automotive speech recognition, even in the noisiest environments. You, you know, a car can get pretty noisy, but so can a restaurant. I was looking at the brochure for this company. drive through is not the only thing they're after. They want the indoor business too. They've got that unit right there that sits on your table. It talks to you like your waiter. You don't need a waiter. And you know what? Since you don't have a waiter, you really don't have to tip the same way. You'll probably have a server bring you your food and you'll give them something, but you're not going to give them that full 18, 20% or more, are you? So this is going to be indoors and outdoors. How much business do you think there is? There's a lot of business. How many restaurants are there? Oh my God, how many drive-throughs? And if you can actually show this, these companies that they're gonna make all this extra money by incorporating this service and their customers like it and it brings their customers back and they can actually use that spare person somewhere else in the store, yeah, I think this is going to be big. So what was the relative volume on the company today? Ooh, look at that. What a significant drop. She was at a low 103,000 shares a day, which is already under the radar. And she dropped all the way down to 11,600 shares today. I honestly don't know what to think. Under the radar is one thing, but that is a big surprise. Share structure, we don't have to concern ourselves with it because it's a warrant. You don't worry about floats or anything like that. You don't have to worry about reverse splits, none of that stuff. Financials for Presto Automation. Well, we've got nothing annually because they weren't in business until September of 2022. So looking at the quarterlies, look at that. September 2022, out of the gate, their very first financial, they're already doing $7.7 .7 million. We know it's millions, right? We got three zeros here. We got to put behind any of the numbers down here. And then the next quarter, they did $7.3 million and they just had a news press come out on their last quarterly report. It too was about $7.4 million. So they're doing steady business every quarter, but I'm expecting this to take off. I'm expecting them to get McDonald's, Burger King, and all these interior restaurants. And I think their business is just literally going to explode. Let's take a look at their disclosures. All right, we got lots of disclosures over here, all recent pretty much because the company's only been around since September of last year. And that's exactly what most of these filings are about, getting the company set up, things being taken care of, just shuffling pieces around. We got an 8K here. This one was just announcing their financials. And we've got a ton of Form 4s here. Now, Form 4s are normally good news. These are um, when insiders buy or sell shares of the stock. And whenever they invest in the company, they have to put a Form 4 out. Well, none of these Form 4s are them buying, but they're not them selling either. They're being used in a weird sort of way. As I said, they're structuring the company right now. Management and all of them are getting their shares set up. So that's pretty much what all that is. So all of these filings, pretty much of no concern for us. So let's take a look at that news. So here's our news. This is the uh, very first news press we read there. Hello, this is who we are. This is their news that came out in January for their deal with Del Taco. At the end of January, they made the deal with Checker and Rally. And there is their financial results that I was telling you about. And that is all their news currently right now. We are just watching this company grow. I think it is going to be hot. I think they're going to be big. I think you're going to go to a fast food restaurant and it's going to happen to you. And you're going to go, the wizard told me about this. <laughs> Let's go check out this chart because that's what it's all about. I found this stock because of the chart. We are taking a look at the warrant for Presto Automation, ticker PRSTW. We're going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. So this is a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble of 40 cents and a low bubble of three and a half cents. The low hit here in January, she bounced off that low crossing her 50 and 200, hit a high here of 23 cents and then fell fast and hard all the way back down to four cents. She is bouncing off of that right now and she is just now getting on top of her nine directly, directly underneath our 200. 
Now, I'm not crazy about the 50 day being all the way up here. That's not too exciting. But I'm looking down below and my technicals are telling me that things are changing right now. We have a crossover imminent on our PPO, our percentage price oscillator. If you don't know what that is, think of it as a MACD. It's exactly the same way to read them, except the MACD uses the whole price and the PPO is the percentage price oscillator. It only uses a percentage of the price. So we want this to be pointing up, pushing up on top of this pink line. She is working in that direction right now. Meanwhile, we've had a crossover on our MACD. It is pushing up and our green bars are accumulating. Our RSI has been growing since the uptrend started. Now we also have a bit of a spread between our blue PPO and my ADX. I love this, it's a very simple oscillator. It is just about if the line is going straight. Don't worry if it's pointed up or down, just is it going straight? As long as it's straight, it means whatever trend is on your chart is continuing. Well, as long as this line just keeps going that way, that way, that way, it means this is going up. So. Watching the blue and the red spread, like a bobby pin being spread further and further apart, you know for 100% this is rising. When either one of these two change direction, that has stopped rising. I love these two together. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So we got a high bubble here of uh, 23 and a half cents, crashed very hard right through the 200, took a little bit of very break there. You can see she hung on to it for a while, fell down to that low, took a couple days to actually get on top of the nine. Look how big the price bar got. Once it got from underneath the nine to on top of the nine, that's the power, that's the strength. Now we are on a one hour chart. You're not gonna see that on your one minute or five minute charts. Be sure to be looking at all your charts when you're trading. Don't just get stuck on one time limit. You need to keep going in and out so you can see what's going on. Once she got on top of the, the uh, nine day, she stuck up there. She had a pullback, but she laid right on her nine and now she's underneath the 50 on her one hour. Ready to break it and get on top of that 200. And look at our beautiful bobby pin spread. That is perfect, that is exact. You see how they're coming together here? They're getting tighter and tighter. Guaranteed your price is falling when that blue and red line are coming together. Then when you get super close, you get a flat line, and then when they start spreading apart, you get a rise. Isn't that a nice uh, oscillator setup there? We've got a crossover on our MACD right when she started to climb there. Everything is looking strong. Our RSI has come from the basement underneath 30, all the way up to 59.60 right now. The only thing we're missing right now is volume. That's the only thing that's not here. Ooh, boy, did she drop today. And our five day, five minute. She's been running for the last five days, not super strong, but it's been a steady climb. We got a low bubble in this corner, a high bubble in that corner. You can't ask for any more than that. Looks like she had a pullback. Let's look at our one day, one minute. Yep, she hit her high, pulled back, but I mean, it's not even a red bar, and she's pushing her way up still, getting a little ways away from the nine day, so if she pulls back, I would expect her to come back to her nine day. She did break it here, but bounced right back into position. She is respecting the lightest of her SMAs. You have to appreciate that in a price. The lighter, the, uh, the smaller the SMA they're sitting on, the easier the price is gonna rise, and this is pulling away from the 20. Everything is looking good on our oscillators. Our PPO is pushing up, getting further away from the red. We've just had that crossover in the MACD. RSI is up at 65. No, she doesn't look like she's ripping and roaring, but she looks like she's pointed her nose in the right direction. Her wheels are moving. We just need to get a little volume so we can get this thing into the next gear, and I think we could get a nice pop off of it this. Now, looking at the supports, I was looking at her, and it looks to me like we're at about 11 cents and 9 cents here, right up under this area here. Here, let me grab a line here. We've got two, uh, not too hard of a resistance to get through. 
one here at the nine day or a nine cent and one at the 11 cents and once she gets past that you should be able to start getting some bigger gains out of this she could push up to 13 cents then and then maybe up to about 17 cents i'm just throwing it in there harshly but that is what we're looking at she needs to get past that nine and the 11 which will put her on top of the 200 and then she should be like a dog out of her pen this next stock we're taking a look at is going through a lot of changes right now. As a matter of fact, they just had a change of control. This is Lee Pharmaceuticals, ticker LPHM. She finished today at 24 cents with over 11% losses. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those two green ticks I'm always talking to you about, a verified profile and a transfer agent. So she looks good. And currently she has a shell company but I expect that is gonna change. See, the company's got filings. They've got news presses, but they're all about the same thing. The reverse merger they just did in the middle of February. They no longer are Lee Pharmaceuticals. Haven't changed the name or ticker yet, but it's a new company. The company now is Ron Motor Group. They tell us over here that Ron Motor Group is a global zero emission hydrogen fuel cell automaker. Ron Motor Group is currently designing middle mile trucks and will expand into SUVs for commercial uses. The company works with global leaders in automotive manufacturing and currently has several distribution agreements in negotiations. The company is also teaming up with a leading hydrogen fueling company to develop a hydrogen fuel distribution infrastructure domestically and in key countries around the world. So they're working with fuel cell electric vehicles. We're not using lithium batteries. We're using hydrogen fuel cells, which don't burn hydrogen. They make electricity. So your electric cars are running on electricity and they want to create this distribution infrastructure for that hydrogen. That is a big plan. What is the relative volume around this company today? No, yes, it was a slow day, but come on. She lost 50% of her volume today, dropping from about 100,000 shares to just under 50,000 shares. He gets share structure for the company. All right, I did go try to find some information out about this because this is a pretty low float, but it looks right because the restricted shares is 280 million. That's the insiders and their total outstanding share count is 310. So take 280, subtract that from 310. They say we have about 30 million shares in the float. Well, I tried to jump into the pink to verify it. It's not a disclosure, it's a 10Q, and they normally don't put them in those. Then I went over to Google. It was absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna take them at their word that the math is right here, and we're looking at a float at about 30 million. Financials, we don't need to waste our time there because they're a shell company. Shell companies don't make any money. That's why they're shell companies. Disclosures, they do have some, but nothing we really need to concern ourselves with at this point in time. So let's take a look at that news. The company really doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of news here. Actually only goes back to February 16th when they announced their reverse merger. Their next piece of news came out on the 23rd. We're gonna take a quick glance at that one. And then they had one come out today. They added a strategist, an executive vice president, and a marketing firm to their team. Looking at that news that came out February 23rd, they tell us that Ron Motor Group has finalized the feasibility and engineering of new hydrogen fuel cell electric class three through class six commercial delivery platform trucks. We're talking about those small flatbed delivery trucks that you see running around the city all day long. The company announced the establishment of a dedicated logistic division that will launch class three through class six hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles designed for medium duty trucks to serve the urban delivery market globally. The trucks will be able to travel 300 miles on their smaller fuel cell and up to 500 miles on their larger fuel cells. The company anticipates delivering prototypes by the fourth quarter of 2023 and showcasing the vehicles by the second quarter of 2024. So they've got big plans, they're working on a lot of things, and it is going to take some time. But the chart looks like it's ready to give something right now. So I think we need to consider that fact. Well, let's go look at the chart and consider that fact. 
So this is the chart that caught my attention. What do you think about it? This is LPHM, six month, four hour view. We got a low bubble here in January, just a hair over a penny. And mid February, we hit 40 cents. Oh my God, over 3000% run right there, folks. She has been falling all of this time, had an abrupt drop and plop right here, crawled across the floor, hitting that low bubble, got up over top of that 50 day SMA the hard way, and then jumped really hard and fast wanted up over that 200. You could see she had determination, pushed herself up over that, hit that high, has fallen back and is now sitting on her 200 day SMA. Now, if you draw a support here, a resistance, you can see right here, all of this is sitting on it. This is right where it fell from. This is where it returned to and that's where it's sitting right now on top of the 200 on top of this strong support she's got some strong bars here and she is bouncing up with uh, higher lows on each bar there you can see that each low is getting higher and higher she is on top of her nine day sma volume is a little light today by 50 percent our technicals our ppo is pushing up right now and spreading apart from our adx it looks like our uh, MACD is trying to do a crossover right now, but it doesn't look like it's a guarantee. Looks like it's debating it. And our RSI is up at 56 and pulling back just a wee bit right now. Our 20 day, one hour view. So this is where she came out from underneath on top of her 50, had that huge jump, got on top of that strong support. You can see she went sideways in this area, got a nice roll up came back down, hit our support, which is right there on the 50, stuck to the support more than the 50, but now has jumped off of the support onto a nine day and is trying to get back on top of that 50 again right now. Our technicals, they are showing recovery. Our PPO just had a crossover, just got on top of that pink line, and this is still pushing down. We still have a spread here. Our MACD, it is just crossing a signal line right now, but it is arguing with it. And would you believe our RSI is rising right now at 53. Looking at our five day, five minute view. This is that strong support. She is respecting the heck out of it. She did have a strong break here, but look how fast she came back up. She fell from uh, 16 cents down to 10 cents and bounced right back up. Then had a huge jump here from 16 cents up to 26 cents. Came back down to her 50 day SMA and then started climbing on her nine day. She's pulled back, fell to her 50 again and is now jumping back up onto her nine. This looks like a little roller coaster going uphill. Our technicals, well, our oscillators are all showing signs of strength. Not superb strength, but you can see that is pushing up, getting a distance from our pink line. Same thing with our MACD, our RSI is climbing, and this is ever so slightly coming downhill while that is going up. So LPHM, she does show on the charts that she has some potential. And with the reverse merger just happening, any sort of news right now could help this thing to jump. LPHM, I think it's worth putting on your watch list. What do you think? This last company we're taking a look at really caught my attention. Now, initially I found this stock by identifying a warm chart. Then I came over here looking for that lingering news or filings. They don't have any. And still, I'm gonna share this with you. Why? For one very big reason, their revenues. Look at how big those revenues are. Now, don't forget, we got to add three zeros behind any of these numbers. So in 2021, they did $430 billion worth of business. So in my mind, I'm thinking, who needs a press release? Who needs a filing? When you're making that kind of money on a pink tier of the OTC, it's a great opportunity, especially when the chart looks like this. Then it occurred to me, oh no, maybe this is a restricted stock. See, I had this happen before. I do believe it was with ticker CRFM. They too were a huge corporation on the pink tier on the OTC. But when I tried to buy it, it wouldn't let me buy it. So I caught up TD Ameritrade and I said, why can't I buy this pink on the OTC? They said, well, it's a special security and to buy it, you've got to have $1.5 million in your account. 
<laughs> what? I could have $1.5 million in my trading account to buy a pink on the OTC market. And mind you, it was a penny stock. He said, yeah, that is the case. I asked him if there was anything anywhere we could see to tell us of those sort of stocks. He said, there is nothing. The only way you find out is to try to buy it. Now, another piece of information that may make it restricted, they call the company China Petrochemical Corporation, but it's also called Sinopec Group. Sinopec Group is a state-owned company solely invested by the state. We're talking China. Functioning as the state authorized investment organization in which the state holds the controlling share headquartered in Beijing. So this very well may be another restricted stock. I'm not gonna try to buy it tomorrow, but if someone tries to buy it and it is restricted, how about letting me know? So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, wouldn't you know their volume goes up from 271,000 to almost 2 million shares today. Share structure on SN PMF is atrocious. Folks, that is 25 billion shares outstanding. Now, they don't tell me the float, and I wasn't really expecting to find a great float, but I did go looking, and what I found on Google was completely wrong. They told me only two numbers, 32 billion and 34 billion. Well, you can't be higher than the outstanding, so <laughs> I don't know what the float is, but I'm sure it's billions and way too high. Disclosures for the company, since we've already looked at the financials. They've got a lot of them here, but this big corporation has got some weird ones. When you open them up, they're just not regular information. There's a lot of strange information in here, so I didn't see anything we should particularly be looking at. Jumping over to the news, they give us none, which really surprised me. I mean, this is a huge corporation. They're involved in a lot of things. There should be all kinds of news here. So I ran out to Google, and sure enough, there was a lot of news out there. Now, there was lots of news. I'm only going to share two of them with you just so you can see they are doing things. This came out February 24th. Sinopec launches the world's largest green hydrogen coal chemical project in Inner Mongolia. The project is projected to reach an annual production capacity of 30,000 tons of green hydrogen and 240,000 tons of green oxygen. This is something they are building over in Mongolia. Another piece of news they've got is that they are taking advantage of the cheap, cheap prices of oil coming out of Russia right now. They are stocking up on all of it. They are buying as much Russian oil as they possibly can. So they got a lot of things they're doing. They're making a lot of money. They've got way too many shares. And the chart looks pretty decent if they let us buy it. Let's go take a look at that chart. As you can see, she is on an uptrend right now. This is ticker SNPMF, six month, four hour chart. We got a low bubble here in November of about 40 cents, jumped into that channel, started her uptrend, and today she hit a high of 56 and a half cents. And look, our 200 day SMA just came onto the chart here, and that is when she got strong. It's like she realized she was on the right side of the 200 day SMA and said, let's go for it. And since then, she has been creating higher lows all through this. Everything is looking good. You can see our volume is increasing and our technicals are very strong. We had a strong crossover on our PPO pushing up hard. Same with our MACD, lots of green bars accumulated and look, our RSI is on fire right now. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So she's going sideways here, not doing a whole heck of a lot until she got close to that 200. She tagged it once right here, crushed it, jumped back up, got her footing. It is all about the 200 right now. Then she got quite excited. She showed us what she wanted to do, had a hard jump, came down. Now she's landed on her nine day SMA and she is floating on that away from the 200 day SMA. Look at our technicals, they are outstanding. Look at that PPO, strength. Look at our MACD, lots of strength and growth and we are still up at the high zone of our RSI. Five day, five minute chart. So she was underneath the 50, hit her head here, hit her head there. She's wrestling with it, trying to get on top, success. She's on top of it, jumped immediately under a nine day SMA and has got these frog leaps going right now. 
boing, 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 and she is sticking to it, sticking to her nine day SMA and she is rolling up right now. Everything really looks good. I'm not saying it looks super strong, but everything looks great. I just don't know if we're going to be able to buy it. The company's making hundreds of millions of dollars. The stock is moving. It's taking gains. It's on an uptrend. I only hope you can get in. If you can't, I am sorry that I brought this to your attention. I think we've got three interesting stocks here. We've got one PRST. We're looking at the warrant PRSTW Presto. This is the company that is working with the artificial intelligent drive through voice that can be celebrities or characters or anybody. I honestly think that is going to be hot. Then we have LPHM. They got the reverse merger going on right now. All sorts of things can pop. That's one to keep your eye on. And then we've got the one that might and might not be tradable. But do your own DD, folks. I didn't cover everything. There's a lot more information. I just like to bring you stocks that have potential and are interesting. Did I succeed? Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.